Hey, it's Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I want to talk to you about something super important and that is the connection between fascia and lymph and your ability to detox. So what does fascia have to do with lymph? Well, a lot because the lymph system actually lives within the superficial fascia. So superficial just means closer to the surface. So it's closer to the surface of our skin as opposed to deep next to the bone. And we have lymphocytes and then we have lymph vessels, which are responsible for moving lymph up to the subclavian veins where it then drains into the gut and then maybe moves out or hopefully moves out. So if you have uh, restricted fascia or super tight fascia throughout your body or in certain places where there's a lot of lymph concentration, uh, lymph nodes for example, you're going to have a really hard time detoxing even just from daily exposure because let's face it, we live in a modern industrial world, it's pretty toxic even if you live clean like I try to, um, it's hard to avoid toxins and toxicity. So. Um, having the ability to detox automatically, naturally, right, is super important just on a daily basis. And then if you've ever struggled with anything like I have, like mercury poisoning or other heavy metals or VOC or chemical toxicity, pesticide poisoning, to name just a few, um, then you're going to have a hard time detoxing well if your fascial system is restricted and not allowing that lymph to move like it needs to. So lymph can't actually pump itself. It requires the muscles and the fascia to actually pump that fluid up and so it can drain out. Uh, so movement is also very critical for lymph drainage. So even light active movement, walking, but any kind of movement is going to help you actually detox better. Now, if you've ever heard of something like a fascia release flu, which I know was getting talked a lot about when the fascia blaster became super popular, and as some of you know, I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's not what this video is about. Um, but if you've ever heard of that, it's because you're probably moving a lot of that superficial um, fascia and lymph together without necessarily opening up the ducts. And the most important area that you wanna open up um, which is the visceral fascia, abdominal fascia here, so that it can drain properly and actually move all the toxicity that you've just moved, if you're using something like a fascia blaster, um, into the abdominal cavity and then out of the body, right? So you don't want to actually move it up to the ducts up here only to have a blockage, right, of tight fascia that's not allowing that buildup to actually drain all the way out. Um, and then even if you've opened up, you know, your upper body and stuff up here, but you haven't opened up your abdominal cavity, fascially speaking, um, then you might end up pretty sick. So um, this is just a really good thing to keep in mind as you're learning about fascia and your body and trying to keep yourself healthy through fascial release because um, one thing I want you to know is if you get on a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or any other mobility tool, and your fascia feels particularly tender, like not in that intense way that it can feel, um, which is gonna be more in the category of fascia, you're feeling your fascial tightness, right? And the restriction and maybe some nerve stuff happening, but tender, like really, really tender tissue right at the surface, right? Like if you have a hard time putting a lot of weight on a foam roller because it just feels like the instant you touch just that surface area, it's like so tender, um, then that's a really good sign, not a good sign, but it's a sign that you are pretty toxic and your lymph isn't moving um, that lymph fluid that's toxic out of your body and so it's just staying within that superficial fascia. So I have a couple of recommendations for you to make sure that you're opening up those channels properly if you want to use something like fascial release um, to move your lymph, which I'm a huge fan of doing. I think it's a great way to move um, lymph and actually detox your whole body in a way that, you know, you don't have to do the kale smoothies, although you can, and the green juices and whatnot. So there are a lot of ways to detox, right? But one way you absolutely can help your body is by opening up 
um, the fascial system and allowing the lymph to move freely like it needs to to detox you. So what you'll want to do, if this is your primary goal, like you're not working on an injury per se, but this is your number one priority is detoxing and improving your fascial lymph um, system, you want to open up your abdominal cavity first, actually. Everything in the abdominal um, area, you're gonna wanna get into, um, and you can do it yourself. So I have a video for that. We're gonna link to it below um, this video in the description. So when you're done with this video, go click that one, and you're gonna wanna open up everything here first. So what this is doing is it's kind of like opening up the lowest dam. Um, in a river, right, where it can start flowing out. We don't want to open up the highest dam first or we run the risk of flooding, right? Things moving um, and not being able to actually move out like they need to because of blockages or other dams. So we want to open up the abdominal cavity first, and then you're going to want to go to um, those subclavian ducts here and do everything you can to open up this area, fascially speaking. So that's going to look like maybe going into your chest, um, for sure, your chest, your pec minor, so pec major, pec minor, um, opening up your biceps and everything here in the neck as well. Um, and I have videos for that. We're gonna link to all of them below um, in the description. So make sure to check the description for this step-by-step -step process I'm gonna give you because I'm not gonna show you all of these techniques in this video. So number one, abdominal area. Number two, the subclavian ducts, and maybe number three, um, the neck area and arms. But then you can get into the legs and you wanna start from the calves, the low calves up. So it all has to move up. So I like starting with the calves first um, and then maybe going into the hamstrings or the quads and the IT bins and the adductors, right? Um, and move it, moving everything up. So whatever body part you're starting on, let's say you get to the quads, you wanna start with the low quads first, not the high quads, if your purpose is to move lymph. So we're basically just inching our way up, moving that lymph through the lymph vessels um, to the subclavian veins, into the abdominal cavity and out of your body. And then obviously you wanna drink a lot of water um, if you're doing this consistently. So this is gonna be a bit of work. You're probably not gonna do it in one day unless you have the whole day to spend on fascia release for your body. And if you do, awesome, I say go for it because you're gonna move a lot out. Just make sure you drink that water and you might consider taking some additional supplements that can help bind to toxins and actually move it out of your body. But I'm not gonna talk about that today. Um, it's not the purpose of today's video. So you could Google that and maybe we'll put some resources for you in the description below. Um, stuff that we like to use to bind to toxins and move it out of the body. So I hope that made sense for you and I love this protocol. I'm actually going to start using it myself because um, I'm still trying to detox from the mercury poisoning and I want to use this wisdom that I feel like I know and have taken for granted. So I'm going to be working alongside of you on this. So please share in the comments below if you're currently working to detox and if so, from what? I'd be very curious. Um, and have you ever considered using fascia release to actually drain your lymph? And if not, what are your thoughts on starting that today? I think it's a great idea because obviously we want to work with all systems of the body. And so for folk overly focused on supplements and other detox strategies like juicing and fasting even, but we haven't opened up those channels in the body physiologically, uh, then we're just not going to be as efficient for it. So this is my number one pick to do. And then I would go to maybe some of those other things that are just as awesome for detoxing. So share your story below, I'll come talk to you. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and please join my email community. I'd love to have you there. Uh, I share stories and tips and I'll share anywhere else every single week by email. And I'd like to give you some free resources you can use to live your best life and feel great in your body. That link is going to be in the description below this video as well. So I'll see you next time.